Hello and welcome to LapLink, the award-winning provider of PC lifecycle solutions for over 35 years and the home of PC Mover, the only migration solution recommended by Microsoft and Intel. Today we'll be giving an overview of PC Mover, what it does and how it works, and giving a complete walkthrough of PC Mover Enterprise V11. So first, some PC Mover basics. What does PC Mover do? Well, the idea here is to migrate what we call the complete user personality from one Windows environment to another one. Now, this could be an uh, old PC being replaced by a new PC. It could be the same old PC that you're going to re-image with a, a brand new version of Windows, let's say. Uh, or it could even be migrating on the same PC. And we'll walk through uh, each of those workflows and those scenarios shortly. Uh, but when we talk about the complete user personality, we really look at this from three levels. Uh, at the very bottom, of course, we have files and folders, those things that are typically stored in uh, user profile folders, but uh, of course, every once in a while, some users like to save their data outside of those folders, and we'll show how well we handle that. Uh, on top of the files and folders, we've got all those user profile settings, application preferences, and so forth, a lot of things in the registry. And then finally, on top, really the key differentiator of PC Mover is the ability to transfer applications. And these could be modern applications that are coded properly through the MSI setup routine. These could be what we call unregistered applications, uh, older applications. Uh, we often find that there are critical line of business applications that are so old that our clients may not even have the install set anymore, and we do a great job of handling that. So again, that combination of those three levels, applications and their settings on top, user accounts, even multiple user accounts on the same machine, uh, the settings for those users, and documents of these users wherever they may reside on the machine. Now, there are two basic methods of migration. Ultimately, again, we're just looking to move all this information that we're selecting from the original environment into a new environment. But again, depending on your particular use case, two main methods of transfer. First, we have the so-called direct transfer. This is a live transfer or streaming transfer. This is a synchronous process where you actually do have two machines, old PC, new PC. And we connect them up, and PC Mover runs live on both machines at the same time and the two machines talk to each other and transfer only the information that is needed. And you can make that connection through a variety of methods. The most common would be over a LAN connection, uh, but you could also do it over Wi-Fi. That's typically not recommended because of Wi-Fi's uh, lack of reliability uh, and traffic burst and contention with other users, uh, but um, you can do it over Wi-Fi if absolutely necessary. Uh, you can also use a direct cable connection if both machines have an Ethernet port, you could use just a direct cable between them, uh, also Thunderbolt. Uh, if you have two newer machines with Thunderbolt capability, you could do a direct Thunderbolt cable connection. And LapLink also offers USB cables. These are proprietary and are used for some unique circumstances. So uh, cases of remote users uh, who may not have a LAN, uh, cases where your machines may be high security, uh, may not be on the network. Uh, they may be isolated kiosk machines, for example. So we do have a lot of different connection methods for this direct transfer. More commonly used in enterprise environments is the so-called file-based transfer. This is an asynchronous operation where first we effectively export the information that we want to transfer from the original environment, and we save that into a so-called moving van or transfer file. That is an intermediary file that is stored on external storage. Typically in a campus environment, this would simply be a file share, but it could also be uh, an attached uh, USB stick or disk. The second half of the process is then to import that information into the new environment from that intermediary file. Again, this is an asynchronous process. The PC Mover does not need to be running on both machines at the same time, and that helps make the file-based transfer very amenable to automation, and we'll be showing that in the walkthrough. So now just a quick walkthrough of the four workflows that are available in PC Mover Enterprise. The first, transfer between PCs. That is that direct live streaming transfer that I mentioned just a moment ago. 
And again, this is most useful in the hardware refresh use case where you are migrating from an old PC to a new physical PC. And then we have that file-based transfer. Once again, this is that asynchronous operation. And this is a little bit more versatile. Uh, hardware refresh, again, migrating to a new PC, you can certainly use this for that. Uh, or a simple OS refresh. Uh, again, if you're going to be re-imaging the same PC, you want to use the exact same hardware, but you want to deploy a new image to it. Uh, this allows you, again, to export the information from the old environment, then re-image the PC, and then import it back in. And finally, also support for P2V migrations. Uh, we see uh, increasing business in the virtual space, uh, whether you're migrating to an on-premises VDI environment, moving to a cloud-based VDI environment, such as uh, Windows Virtual Desktop or Amazon Workspaces, or whether you're migrating from VDI to VDI, on-prem or in cloud, the file-based transfer is suitable for those. The third workflow, Image and Drive Assistance, is primarily used for break-fix type scenarios. Uh, essentially what this offers you is the ability to uh, import information from an offline Windows environment. So let's say that I have a laptop and the screen is broken, but the hard drive still works. I could extract that disk, uh, mount it onto my new replacement machine, run PC Mover with the Image and Drive Assistant workflow, and PC Mover will work exactly the same as it would in the other scenarios, being able to import all that information that we want from that offline Windows environment into our new live running Windows environment. Uh, you can also import from a, an image backup of an old PC. We've seen some clients who take uh, VHD backups of PCs, uh, really any imaging software that you can mount onto the new machine. Effectively, it's the same thing. And then finally, the Profile Migrator workflow. This is really intended for two use cases. Uh, first would be uh, on-prem Active Directory domain migration. So I'm using my PC. It is a member of an on-prem local Active Directory domain. I'm now migrating to a new on-prem Active Directory domain. And I want to migrate all my user uh, uh, information from the old account into the new account. But also, again, something we're seeing more and more is cloud migration. Once you, as an organization, are managing a user's PC and they log in with their Azure Active Directory account, it is extremely difficult to get access to the old on-prem domain account. PC Mover makes this easy with the Profile Migrator workflow. And now, let's hop right into it. So let's take a look at our demo environment here. You can see it's pretty basic. I've got uh, old Windows 7 machine, new Windows 10 machine here. Windows 10 is really just out-of-box experience at this point. There's nothing else installed. It's been patched, but nothing extra added to it. It's got a single user account and a single disk drive. The Windows 7 machine, you can see there's a little bit of configuration. I've got some applications installed. Uh, Chrome here with a uh, bookmark, uh, so you can see how we transfer that. Uh, I've got VLC. VLC occupies sort of a special place here. It's what we call an unregistered application. That is an application that does not conform to the normal MSI type setup routine, uh, which means that it does not appear in add remove programs. I just downloaded the portable installation of VLC and unzipped it to a random folder on the disk. Again, just to demo how well we handle that. You might be surprised at how often we find these older unregistered applications or even new ones on machines. In fact, sometimes we find older unregistered applications that are so old that you may not even have the installation set anymore. So the ability to transfer those is, of course, very, very helpful. A couple other differences uh, between uh, these two machines. Uh, on the old PC, we actually added a second hard drive to it. So this is a very common scenario. Maybe the old PC was working just fine, but it was running out of disk space. So we added a second drive to it. And we've got some uh, miscellaneous files and folders on that. And finally, we've got two user accounts on the old machine as well. So, of course, most uh, typical endpoint users will only have a single primary user account on the machine, but uh, occasionally we do find some software that likes to have its own account, sort of a service account, let's say. But you also have the use case of the kiosk machine or a shared conference room PC, where you may have multiple users on the machine that you want to transfer without having to do more than one transfer. Transfer. 
Finally, back to the uh, add or move programs list. One other interesting thing to note here is that PC Mover itself is not in this list. That's because PC Mover Enterprise is portable. And the most common deployment scenario in a campus environment is actually to install PC Mover from the setup files once to your local machine and then simply copy the entire PC Mover executable folder up to a network share to run from. And that's exactly what we've done here. Here's that network share that includes the PC Mover executables and supporting files, and that's actually where we'll be running from. Again, PC Mover is not installed on either of these machines, though I did create shortcuts just to make the demo easier. So now let's go straight into PC Mover, run it on both machines, and we will walk through the first workflow. So transfer between PCs, again, this is that direct live streaming transfer. Let's hit next. Run PC Mover on both PCs. We're doing that, so let's proceed into the workflow. PCs will locate each other on the network and determine the right transfer direction. Now, the vast majority of cases, it will get the transfer direction correct. Uh, it bases this based on uh, time of last user account creation, time of last logon, operating system version, of course. A lot of different factors, and again, most of the time, it does get it right. In this case, it is correctly identifying that I want to move from my Windows 7 machine to my Windows 10 machine, but it is always a good idea to verify this just to be sure. In the rare case where PC Mover detects it wrong, you can manually switch the transfer direction. Once the machines are connected as they are now, we're actually done with the old environment. We're going to drive this from the new environment. So let's click on Analyze PC. The time it takes to analyze a PC, just like the amount of time it takes to actually perform a transfer, will vary significantly depending on how much you have installed on that machine and how much data you have, of course. We do offer advanced capability to choose uh, at a more granular level what you do and do not want to transfer. So PC Mover at a very fundamental level will automatically want to transfer everything that it can. If you don't make any other choices, if you simply run PC Mover and click next, 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 you will get what we call a standard transfer. Remember, we have those three main buckets of information that are stored in user accounts. At the top, we've got the applications. Beneath that, we've got the user profile information, those registry settings and so forth and at the bottom level we have the files and folders so what we call a standard transfer is all of the above but we do also provide two other convenient buckets for you let's say you want to transfer everything except applications you are going to be deploying a whole new set of applications and managing them you don't want to transfer anything the user had previously you can choose this second choice where again it'll transfer the account information all the registry settings application settings in most cases in files and folders, but no actual applications. And then, of course, that final bucket at the bottom, just files and folders only wherever they may reside on the other machine. And finally, a very basic advanced choice capability where you can select uh, or deselect particular applications, files and folders to transfer, uh, select which user accounts you want to transfer if there's more than one available, and so forth. In this case, we're going to go ahead and do a standard transfer. The analysis is complete, and let's simply start our transfer. Transfer is complete, <clears throat> and the last action we need to take will be to restart the PC to get all of those registry changes that we made. So we will do that now. All right, the machine has rebooted, so let's log in and see what it looks like. All right, this is my Windows 10 machine, as we can see. And of course, we saw that we have the user profile information transferred over. We can see that in the wallpaper. Uh, here's my portable application, unregistered application. That's working fine. Let's take a look at Chrome, we can see that my Laplink bookmark was brought over. 
Now what happened to that second disk that I had on the old machine? Let's take a look at the C drive here. And you can see the default behavior if there is sufficient space available on the disk of the new machine. You can see what will happen. It will automatically copy all of that information from secondary disks in the old environment to folders that we will simply hang off the C drive on the new environment. And finally, let's take a look at the user accounts. You can see that we did transfer over the second user account that was on the old machine. So everything got migrated over, everything transferred well. So now I'm going to introduce you to the next important piece of functionality of PC Mover Enterprise. And we will primarily use this during testing and configuration while we're verifying functionality. Let's say we did this transfer, we didn't like what we see, or we want to make some modifications to this. Well, since a transfer just completed, PC Mover is a of that. We keep uh, log files locally on the machine and if I simply run PC Mover again it will present me with a new option which is to undo the last transfer. Again we keep a very detailed log of everything that we do to the new machine and so rather than having to re-image the machine or manually unwind the changes that were made during the transfer we can simply run the undo process and it will pull all of that back. Finish the undo, restart again because of the registry changes. And the machine is finished rebooting, so let's log back in again. You can see it's been reverted back to its original configuration. The applications are gone, that extra file folder is gone, the extra user account is gone. We're back to the original configuration. And that's how easy it is to do a direct live streaming transfer between two machines using PC Mover. Let's move on to the second workflow. And this will be the file-based transfer. Again, this is the asynchronous operation. This is where we're exporting from the original environment to the moving van transfer file uh, located on external storage. And then in part two, we import that into the new environment. In this case, for the external storage, I will be using a simple file share on the network. We can see that there's nothing in it right now, but we'll be keeping that handy watch what happens when we start building that transfer file. So let's go into the file based transfer workflow. This is my old computer and it's asking us to enter the name of the transfer file that we want to create. Again I'm going to point this to the network share that I have available. And I'm just going to call it mytransfer.pcv. PCV is the extension that we associate with these transfer files. And once again, as with the direct transfer workflow, we do have the ability to do those basic modifications. In this case, I'm going to go ahead with another standard transfer. And now we're ready to create it. Let's go ahead and create this transfer file. And keep an eye on this folder. We can see now we are creating the file in progress. And when it is complete, it will rename that to its final name. And there we go. We're done with part one. So again, at this point, we are done with the old PC. Now, if this is an OS refresh scenario where you're going to be re-imaging the same hardware and then importing back into it, this is when you do that. Uh, if this is an old PC, new PC situation, this is where you would typically just shut off the old PC and put it on a shelf for a few days to allow the user to verify the new environment. Let's move on to that new environment and run PC Mover with the same workflow in the opposite direction. File based transfer. This is my new computer, and we're simply going to point it to that transfer file. Continue. 
And here we go. <clears throat> so now it's warning us about some of the discrepancies between the machines and giving us some uh, advanced choices to make. So you can see here, <clears throat> again, on the old PC and the new PC, I already had a single user called Demo1. And by default, PC Mover will match up uh, the primary user accounts on the machines, which I could edit if I want. You'll see here that it does say that the new PC did not have this Demo2 account. Uh, and by default, it will automatically create that account like it did during the direct transfer. Now, in this case, let's say that I don't want to transfer that second account. Let's move into my advanced choices here and say, well, let's not transfer that second account. Save that and continue. And now it's warning me about that second disk. Assuming there is sufficient space on the new machine to accommodate all of that data from any secondary volumes on the old machine, you can see the default behavior, which is simply to copy that information into its own folder off the C drive in the new environment. And the transfer is complete. Once again, we do need to restart to get all those registry entries. And the machine is rebooted, so let's log in and see what it looks like. Once again, transfer completed successfully in the same way. All that information that we decided to bring over was brought over just fine, including my unregistered application and, of course, Chrome with my bookmark there. Uh, we did not transfer the second user account. And let's take a look at the C drive once more, there is that information from the other machine's secondary disk. So now once again, we will run the undo process, simply run PC Mover again, and undo transfer. And we're done. Reboot and we'll be back to our original configuration again. The machine has rebooted. Let's log in. And here we go, back to our original configuration once again. Now before moving on with the third workflow, Image and Drive Assistant, let's talk a little more about the file-based transfer and the automation possibilities with the use of PC Mover policies. Now recall that we are running PC Mover portably from a network share. There is another application in that folder called the PC Mover Manager. Now this will appear in your start menu if you did install this on your local workstation and you can run it from anywhere. So let's run it portably as well. And here is the PC Mover Manager interface. So the primary use for PC Mover Manager right now is to create these so-called policy files. Policy files are really just XML directives with a very pretty interface on the front, so you don't actually need to be modifying any XML. Uh, and policies allow you to make very advanced, very deep, very granular choices about exactly what you want PC Mover to do during the transfer process. Um, two of the most common uses for this are, one, to make extra advanced choices for unique scenarios, advanced folder redirection, user redirection and mapping, uh, different specific options that are covered in the GUI's advanced configuration mode. And I will not be walking through uh, every single one of these nodes here because you can see there are so many different knobs and switches that we can adjust to accommodate our needs here. That This is fully documented, but typically we would be helping you to create policy files that you need for your specific scenario. But I do want to point out a couple things that I've done here, I've created this policy file for the second major use case for policies, which is to automate the PC Mover transfer process. So not only can you make all of these decisions in advance about what you want PC Mover to do, but you have fi fine-grained control over how much you want to show and how much you want to allow the user to adjust all the way to the point where you can simply turn off the entire interface completely. And that's actually what I've done here. 
So all of the choices that I made in the file-based transfer GUI, I've made in here, uh, including a number of directives that I'll show you. So recall that I chose not to transfer that second user account. So I did that for a reason. Um, back in the days before we had advanced IT asset management and remote control and such, there typically was always this ubiquitous backdoor local administrator IT account on all of these local machines. Okay, So in this case, uh, I chose not to transfer this demo2 account, but that could be representative of such an account. Maybe now that you do have that enhanced management capability, you don't need that old IT backdoor account and you want to get rid of it. So I simply put in a directive in here that said, if you ever see a source user by this name, do not transfer this user. Another case for the user selection node here is logon days. This is a very common selection. So again, let's talk about the shared PCs, that conference room PC that's been sitting there for 10 years and has had 200 people logged into it. And you don't need all those old user profiles. A lot of those people are no longer here, let's say. So we want to clean it up as part of our transfer process. Well, what you can do is simply specify this logon day setting and that instructs PC Mover only to transfer user profiles that have logged in to the machine in the past X number of days. So in here I'm saying 30 days. Now remember also that in the case of the file-based transfer, I had to make two selections. I had to say whether this was my old PC or my new PC, and then I had to specify the transfer file that the old PC would create and that the new PC would ingest. That's another selection that I've made in advance here. I've put in the PC names, old and new, and the location of the transfer file. So when a machine runs PC Mover with this policy, it will look its computer name up in this table to find out its role. If it's listed here as old PC, it knows that it needs to create this transfer file. And if it's listed under the new PC, it knows that it needs to ingest that transfer file. And finally, because I made that selection in advance, I unchecked display, and so that screen is completely hidden. So again, I made a few other selections as well. I don't want to go through every node because uh, there are a lot of complicated selections in here that don't apply to most people, and because the feature set here will very likely change in the future. Uh, but what we will have available at all times is a quick reference guide for for all of the different policy settings that you need to do to go to a completely zero touch scenario. And we can also provide you with sample policy files based on your specific needs. So again, the purpose for which I created this transfer file was actually to turn this into a completely zero touch migration. Effectively, what I've done here is turned PC Mover into a command line utility that will do exactly what I want it to do without any need for user interaction whatsoever. What I'm going to do is publish this policy file to that network share from which we're running PC Mover. Again, this is the network share that I copied PC Mover executables into, and I'm simply going to publish it into that folder. Now, note the name of this policy. I'm calling it policy.pol. That is a special name. If a policy is named policy.pol, it will run automatically for anyone who runs PC Mover XE from this folder. There are situations where you may need more than one policy file and you can name them different things. And in such a case, we do have a command line switch that we would use to call the policy. But again, in this case, if you have a policy.pol located in your PC Mover executable folder, anybody who runs PC Mover XE will automatically receive the instructions that are in this policy file. And we're done. So now, Let's bring back up our environment. Let's also bring up the transfer file folder so we can watch what happens. So now that this is here, all we're going to do is run PC Mover again. Again, we're running it from that network share. Simply going to click this, and we receive a splash screen, and it disappears. Now. Because we are running in an interactive session, we're actually logged in as a user account, you will see a remnant here down in the system tray. We leave that there in order to troubleshoot policy files. Uh, if you need to see what it's doing, you can double click that and it will bring up the interface. Let's say, for example, that you forget to provide PC Mover a certain instruction that it would need in the GUI to proceed, and you want to see where it's hanging up on. It's not doing what you want. You could bring that up 
in order to troubleshoot it. But if you have made all of those decisions in advance and you've given PC Mover all the directives it needs and you have turned off the GUI, what will happen is exactly what you see here. It runs, gives the splash, disappears, and then automatically goes ahead and creates that transfer file. And once again, we're now done with the old environment. Let's go to the new environment and complete the process. Again, we did list this machine name as the new PC while pointing to that transfer file, so we have the same process. It will now read that transfer file. You can see it's starting to populate the applications, and the last thing is going to be a reboot. And the machine has rebooted, so let's see what it looks like. As expected, since I made those directives in the policy file to do exactly what I did during the manual GUI-based file-based transfer, in other words, nothing, just told it to do what comes naturally and transfer everything, here we go. We got everything again, everything works just fine, exactly the same transfer effect as the manual GUI-based transfer, but it was done completely touchless. And you can imagine where we can go from here. Since we have now turned PC Mover again effectively into a command line utility that follows these explicit directives we gave it, now we could move this up into our IT asset management or automation system. So whether you're using uh, SCCM, Altira, Sivanti, Landesk, PDQ deploy, any type of remote execution environment. In fact, you could even use uh, PowerShell remoting or the at service if you want. The point is that if we can list those machine names, old PC, new PC, the associated transfer files we want created and ingested, turn off the GUI, and then instruct each of those PCs to run PC Mover, they will follow the instructions and you don't even need to be logged in to do it. Again, I mentioned on the old PC there, we did have that interface remnant for troubleshooting available. Available, but you don't need to be logged into these PCs to do this transfer. Just run it from your automation system with an account that has appropriate privileges. Typically that would be at least a local administrator and it will run seamlessly and automatically on a schedule that you determine without any user intervention whatsoever. Next step, so we can move on with the remaining workflows, I'm going to undo that transfer. But remember that I just put a policy file in there that turns off the interface. So let's bring up the uh, PC Mover folder on the network. Let's find that policy.pol that I created. Let's go ahead and delete that. Turn it back into vanilla configuration. Run PC Mover again and undo the same way we did previously. And restart. Okay, the undo is complete and the system has rebooted and we can see that it's back to its original configuration. So now let's move on to the next workflow which is image and drive assistant. Now for this I am going to mount a VHD of a Windows 7 machine that looks suspiciously similar to that machine I've been using in the demo here. In this case I'm going to run disk management and attach a VHD and this is a VHD image of the Windows 7 demo machine. You can see it's over on drive F. So now I'm simply going to run PC Mover again and choose the image and drive assistant workflow. I am restoring from one image mounted as a drive, exactly right. And that was on drive F. And here we go. Once again, it's scanning it just like it would an online Windows installation. And again, as usual, you do have this basic advanced configuration here. We're going to continue with the standard transfer again. Here we go. And uh, again, much like the direct transfer, we now have the ability to analyze the destination PC as well so that we don't transfer anything that isn't necessary, anything that's already there. So you can see once again, our total is down around 700 megabytes rather than the gigabyte plus in the file based transfer. Transfer starting. And we're done. Let's reboot and see what it looks like. Machine has rebooted, so let's log in.
And once again, transfer completed successfully as expected. So once again, we'll do the undo, revert to the original configuration, and then we'll move on to the final workflow, Profile Migrator. Okay, the system has rebooted and we are back to our original state. So now let's prepare for the Profile Migrator workflow. Let's check computer management here and you can see that I do not have a secondary account. All I have is my primary demo account here, demo one. What I'm going to do is create a new account. Let's call it new user. Give it a password, make it a local administrator. And now I'm going to log in using that new user account. And this will take a moment because Windows is setting up the new user profile. And here we go. We'll accept all our Microsoft defaults. And we can see here our default wallpaper and uh, Edge Recycle Bin and the rest. Okay. So now <clears throat> what we'd like to do is transfer all our information over from our original profile, which was the Demo1 account. So let's launch PC Mover. Uh, since this is a new account, I don't have the shortcut to the network share. So I'll just type that in manually. PCMover.exe. And let's go into the Profile Migrator workflow. Next, quick analysis, finished analyzing, and now we need to map our users. So specifying the old user and the new user. So our source in this case is going to be the original account, demo one. Target will be new user, click map, and once again, we have the ability to customize as with the other workflows. We'll just continue. and start the transfer. And once again, because we are transferring some registry information, we will need to reboot the machine as our last action. The machine is rebooted, and now we'll log back in using the new user account. You can see it's the new account. And here we go. So what effectively happened was a merge between the profile information we already had, such as uh, the edge icon on the desktop, and the original profile's information, such as the wallpaper. Any application links, shortcuts, documents from the old profile folders, those also would have been moved into the new configuration. And that's it for the profile migrator workflow. And that's it for our walkthrough of the PC Mover workflows. So a quick review of what we just went through. First, the basics of PC Mover. We talked about the different connection methods available for direct transfer and file-based transfer and the use cases for each of those. Then we walked through each of the four workflows, the direct synchronous live transfer for PC to PC, old PC, new PC case, the file-based transfer, which again is an asynchronous process, first with an export from the original environment and an import into the new environment, Image and Drive Assistant, which again is for break-fix scenarios where you do not need to have a running Windows deployment as your source. You can just use a VHD backup or mounting the uh, original disk from the failed machine onto the new machine and import from there. And then finally, the Profile Migrator Workflow, where we have the same machine in the same Windows environment migrating from one profile to another for Active Directory domain migrations and Azure Active Directory migrations. And then during the file-based transfer workflow, we took a look at PC Mover Manager and how we can use it to create policies to make answers to the PC Mover questions in advance and then turn off some or all of the GUI if we wish, all the way to the point where we can create a zero-touch migration deployment. We hope you found this overview and walkthrough helpful. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo and discussion about your particular use cases, send an email to corpsales at lapling.com.